Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What's up, guys? Alexander the Great, part four. All right, uh, so what happened in part three? Um, he defeated Darius, Darius, for a second time, whooped him. Darius had to take in more forces from the east, and I he made it to Babylon. And I'm assuming he's just going to keep going east. And uh, I know he dies young, so uh, there's not a great ending. But let's get right into it. Thanks, guys, so much for recommending this channel. Thank you. And I'm gonna, going to be continuing the Napoleon uh, Epic History TV uh, Part 2. Uh, you know, either later today or probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. Um, so, uh, yeah, hit that. You see that red subscribe button just just hit it just slap it and uh definitely check out epic history tv too blah 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 everything original video down at the top of the description below let's get into it guys let's learn some more invicta at the age of just 22 Alexander, ruler of the small Greek kingdom of Macedonia, had led an invasion of the vast Persian Empire. After a string of victories, he smashed Persian military power at the Battle of Gaugamela and took the Persian throne for himself. Now, in 330 BC, Alexander continued his march east. His goal, to find and kill Bessus, a Persian usurper, claiming to be the rightful king. By the way, I gotta f now watch a video about, uh, you know, the whole, sorry about pausing, uh, the whole purpose of this channel, and I, I love making the videos and everything, I love, you know, you guys obviously interacting and, and uh, recommending videos and, and learning history too, but my main goal is to help fill in each kind of gap, because everything in world history is connected. So that I can have a basic sort of, you know, map, if you will, in my head of, uh, you know, a at least a base level idea of every few centuries in history. Obviously, a little bit more as uh, time goes on and historical records are a bit better. But I got to learn about the uh, formation of the Persian Empire as well. And to subjugate the empire's eastern provinces. Alexander headed first for Arya, today part of Afghanistan, where the Persian governor Sati Barzanes had launched a revolt after initially pretending to submit to Alexander. The rebellion was crushed and Sati Barzanes killed in single combat by a Greek cavalry officer. Oh. Killed you see that? in single combat Yikes. by a Greek cavalry officer. I know you guys have told me a few times I I'm for name is escaping me again of just uh you know the cgi and stuff but it's just great that the maps this is my favorite channel so, thanks to you guys nearby alexander founded the city of alexandria ariana modern herat aren't there like one 10 of around a dozen Ale cities that alexander would eventually found almost all bearing his name alexander marched on to frada the Macedonian court had a long tradition of plots and assassination. Six years before, Alexander's own father, King Philip, had been murdered by his bodyguard. He was now informed that Philotas, commander of his companion cavalry, had uncovered a plot to assassinate Alexander, but kept it secret. Philotas and his father Parmenion were among the most respected of Alexander's commanders and had played crucial roles in all his great victories. But when Philotas confessed under torture, Alexander had him executed, then sent assassins back to Ecbatana, where Parmenion was governor, to kill him before he even heard of his son's death and had a not saying it's incorrect, obviously. Let me go back. But um, if you're torturing someone um, ruthlessly enough, 
um, sometimes they'll, even if they know they're going to die, no matter what, sometimes they'll just say whatever in order to end it sooner. So um, I'm not saying it's wrong, but uh, false confessions in those scenarios can happen. ...governor to kill him before he even heard of his son's death and had a chance to turn against Alexander. Again, I'm not disputing it, I'm just saying. In 329, in Alexander resumed his pursuit of Bessus. En route, he founded the city of Alexandria Arachosia, modern Kandahar in southern Afghanistan. As he reached Kunduz, Bessus was betrayed by his own men and handed over in chains. Alexander sent him back to Persia for execution as a kingslayer. Alexander I love this channel. Into modern okay. Tajikistan, where the Sogdians rose up against him. Where, whoever originally fight off attacks by local recommended it. Take several I owe you by assault. On the banks of the Jaxartes River, he founded the city of Alexandria Escate, Another meaning one. Alexandria the Furthest, so named because he had, at last, reached the limit of the per So named because it's the furthest Alexandria, hmm, from Greece. Persian Empire. Guy is not the most creative when it comes to naming places. This frontier was frequently raided by nomads, known to the Greeks as Scythians. Alexander lured them into a decisive battle near the Chaxartes. Oh man, so I'm, I just, because there's something I really want to say, I'm pausing it again and again. Um, the Scythians, whatever. I know, obviously I know nothing about it, but it's, it, jog, it jogged a, a thought. Um, that I've been wondering the the Asian steppe kind of um north of Pakistan of modern day borders Pakistan Afghanistan Iran um India and uh west of China and Mongolia east of you know the Caspian Sea no east Jesus no I'm sorry west of Mongolia and China east of uh the Caspian Sea and everything, that area in there, what kind of, I know there are a lot of nomadic people in there, people on horseback, uh, Genghis Khan eventually had a bunch of people from there, but during this time, I'm, I'm just, I wonder what was going on. I probably sound like an idiot there. result was a crushing victory for the Macedonian king that put an end to the raids. But fighting against Bactrian and Sogdian tribes continued, frustrating Alexander and tying him down in a difficult guerrilla war. By now, Many of the Macedonian troops were unhappy with Alexander. Most had not seen their homes in years, but their king seemed bent on conquest without end. What was worse, he'd begun to adopt the rituals and dress of their defeated Persian enemy, customs they viewed as effeminate and decadent. Chromebooks start fast. And stay fast over time. Switch to Chromebook. When there's a big war going on somewhere in the universe, that always reflects. At Marakanda, modern summer. I just want to clear that up. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? Can't even hear me. Right in like modern day Kazakhstan, far western China, you know, modern day, you know, in between Caspian Sea and China. I just, 
know so little about there's probably not much written history if i'm wrong maybe uh i'll check something out if you guys know but i just i wanted to when it talked about the scythians just ah and pausing too much after a furious drunken argument alexander killed clitus the black clitus had been one of alexander's best generals and the man who'd saved his life at the battle of the granicus Alexander was full of remorse, but his growing arrogance was alienating more and more old comrades. When he tried to make his countrymen perform the traditional Persian ritual of proskinesis, prostrating themselves before the king, he crossed a line. To Greeks, this was blasphemy. Only a god was worthy of such respect, and Alexander was forced to back down. In Bactria, another plot to assassinate Alexander was uncovered. Everyone is trying to kill him. This time, the ringleader was a royal page, one of the sons of Macedonian nobility who attended the... Honestly, probably not for very terrible reasons. They want, I'm assuming, you know, such a young and powerful and a successful commander like Alexander the Great um, was, was, he was clearly on some kind of megalom megalomaniac kind of, you know, ego, where he's not really thinking about the end game and just wants to conquer and conquer and conquer until the entire world is his, and he's trying to, you know, adopt all these kind of godly type status and adopting Persian culture, and it, obviously it seems like... He's not really thinking about his soldiers or anything like that, or even, you know, way back home in Greece anymore. King. Hermolaus had become murderously bitter towards Alexander over a perceived injustice. He and his accomplices were tortured and then stoned to death. Callisthenes, Alexander's official historian, was also implicated in the conspiracy. He was thrown in prison, where he later died. That summer, in 327, according to legend, Alexander became captivated by the beauty of Roxana, daughter of a Bactrian lord. Their marriage was also a sound political move, helping to end local revolt against his rule, and allowing him to continue his advance into modern Pakistan, and India. It seems like he's going complete crazy at this point, but um, maybe the whole marriage thing will settle all this kind of all these tensions down a bit. Again, I know he dies young, doesn't end well, but let's let's see. Alexander now prepared to subdue the Persian Empire's most eastern provinces, which had yet to recognize his kingship. To do so, he would first have to cross the Hindu Kush mountains and reach the Indus River Valley. Advancing in two columns, his army won a series of skirmishes against the Aspasi and Asakani as they fought their way into what's now the Swat Valley of... I just want to say, so I believe it, this all started in 333 BC, if I can remember right back from the first episode, or maybe his first fight with Darius, um... Or maybe those first fights on the very, not even at Darius yet, just on those, uh, on the um, far western coast of what is now Turkey, you know, next to Greece. Um, so, 4, 5, 6, 33, 2, 1, 30. All right, so there's seven years, so he's like 27 years old, something like that now. Northern Pakistan. After a fierce siege, Alexander took the Asakanian capital of Masaga. For some reason, 31 sticks out. It's According like to year. legend, it was ruled by a beautiful queen, he dies, Cleophis, but I can be who very bore wrong. Alexander a son and was allowed to who? keep. According to legend, it was ruled by a beautiful queen, Cleophis, 
who bore Alexander a son and was allowed to keep her throne. The ruler of Taxila, near modern Islamabad, had formed an alliance with Alexander. Together, they marched to face Porus, king of Paravas, at the Battle of the Hydaspes. It was Alexander's costliest battle, as Porus's war elephants inflicted terrible casualties amongst the Greeks. That is so terrifying. I mean, I've been to the zoo. I've seen, I haven't seen them right up close. I've definitely never ridden on an elephant. I know African elephants are much bigger than Indian elephants, but still, maybe they got them over from Africa. Maybe there were much more elephants at the time. There probably were. Either way, they could have gotten the African ones. Either way, either way, Indian elephants are still huge. And imagine seeing it full of armor with archers on top. Oh, whew. But despite Horus's fearless leadership, the battle ended in a decisive victory for Alexander, winning him control of the Punjab. This is where Tolkien must have gotten elephants from. Alexander wanted to push on into India to reach the Great River, which ancient Greek geographers said formed the edge of the world. He does not but get India. At the River Hyphasis, if I remember known today as the BS, his army mutinied. His men had marched thousands of miles, fought countless battles, and not seen their homes in eight years. They'd heard rumors of gigantic armies waiting for them in India. They refused to go any further. I'm not doubting that there are uh, gigantic armies. Uh, there could have been gigantic armies in India, but also, like... <laughs> If you know there's such an exhausted and extended army who are really fed up with their king, which is probably well-known news even outside of uh, Greek troops or you know, Alexander's troops, then you know that just spreading rumors of giant armies is going to really even uh, depress and um, demotivate those troops even more. So I'm not saying that there weren't those armies waiting, but it also, like, it could have been nothing and just... Uh, rumors that would do the job this channel is so good Alexander i'm sorry was history furious, matters. but had to turn the army around he followed the rivers of the punjab to the sea a journey that took 10 months on the way he defeated the malians but while leading the assault on their capital was wounded in the chest and nearly killed On reaching the coast, part of the army under Nearchus boarded ships and returned to Persia by sea, sailing through the Straits of Hormuz and entering the Persian Gulf. It was one of the great ancient voyages of exploration, as these waters had been previously unknown to Greeks. Meanwhile, Alexander led the rest of the army back by land through the Gedrosian Desert, today in southern Pakistan. But extreme heat and shortages of food and water led to terrible suffering and many deaths among his army. On his return to Persia, Alexander executed several of his viceroys and governors, men accused of ruling unjustly and robbing temples and tombs during his long absence in the east. Well, maybe, uh... Never mind. East. And ...tombs during his long absence in the east. At Susa, he arranged a... Kind of looks like he has, like, ram's horns. I know it's just his hair. Magnificent mass marriage of Macedonian officers to 80 Persian noblewomen to strengthen bonds between his two kingdoms. Alexander himself married two Persian princesses. He also paid all his soldiers' debts and ordered 30,000 youths from across the empire to be trained in the Macedonian art of war. But a 
at Opis, his Macedonian troops mutinied. They were offended by Alexander's apparent preference for Persian advisors and Persian ways. Alexander had the ringleaders executed and made a speech to them. Very interesting. You can tell Alexander and, you know, there's a lot of respect for the Persian Empire and their and what they were capable of. Men reminding them of the glories they'd won together and leading eventually to an emotional reconciliation. At Ecbatana, Alexander's closest and most trusted friend, Hephaestion, died of fever. The king was grief-stricken, went days without eating, and ordered a period of public mourning across the empire. Alexander waged a successful campaign against the mountain raiders of Kossia, who not even the Persian kings had been able to subdue. Returning to Babylon, he was met by embassies from distant peoples. Cool, so even in the heart of the Persian Empire, Kossia, there's this little, there's this group of, of soldiers or the city that still couldn't be defeated despite being surrounded? If so, that's incredibly impressive. Come to recognize his greatness. Sorry. Returning to Babylon, he was met by embassies from distant peoples. Come to recognize his greatness. Ethiopians, Libyans, European Scythians, Lucanians, Etruscans, Gauls, and Iberians. Alexander's Bactrian wife, Roxana, was now pregnant. Question. The Iberians. You guys. You guys are great at answering my questions um, in the comments. But if you got this far in the video, wh why? Um, so there's people from, you know, there's the Gauls, Iberians, uh, Scythians, Etruscans, uh, Lucanians, Libyans, Ethiopians. Why didn't he um, uh, conquer these areas? Why, why not put them under his rule, get all them as, as warriors? I mean, the Rome isn't a thing yet, I don't think. Even if it is, it's a fledgling. Um, uh, maybe they're just good standing. Maybe these soldiers, maybe I missed something and, and I explained it. But uh, why not go uh, west and conquer uh, all those areas? Alexander's Bactrian wife, Roxana, was now pregnant. But as he planned his next campaign to Arabia and beyond, he developed a sudden fever and died days later. 31? Aged just 32. Oh, so close. The cause of Alexander's death has never been established. Hey, uh... All bad stuff you might have done, all that, whatever. We are looking back. I don't think I have to be sort of, you know, PC or whatever. Um, this is a figure from a long time ago. You gotta admire what he accomplished. Not, not maybe how he did it, and don't you don't have to admire war and all that stuff. Just not many people in history are ever put in that situation in warfare, and he did incredible. Um, he was obviously a very efficient leader. It may have been malaria, cholera, typhus, or poison. So he could have been assassinated. Alexander died undefeated in battle. His reputation as a brilliant, fearless, and daring military commander remains undimmed. His decade-long campaign created one of the largest empires ever known, stretching from Greece to Pakistan. But it was vast and unstable, held together only by his own brilliance and name. Alexander left no plans for his succession, and his generals soon began fighting among themselves to carve out their own empires. I mean, this is expected. I did not expect it to In the wars of the successors, together. Alexander's widow, Roxana, and his young son were murdered. Wow. 
what? Empires soon began fighting among themselves to carve out their own empires. In the wars of the successors, Alexander's widow Roxana and his young son were murdered. That's crazy. Widow. What's funny is that uh, fighting among them obviously, like as you see here, no plans for his succession. Like after he dies, and everyone kind of probably looks around, it's like, oh my god, he's dead, and then this is mine <laughs> like just kind of like looked around just like all right this part's mine and then they just start fighting Rolls soon began fighting among themselves to carve out their own empires in the wars of the successors alexander's widow roxana and his young son were murdered his own gold sarcophagus en route to macedonia for burial was hijacked and ended up in Alexandria in Egypt. Today, its location remains one of the world's great unsolved mysteries. I was going to say, there's no way that nobody, just like Genghis Khan, um, that, that, that would be a very well-known thing. Uh, so Genghis Khan as well, I believe, no one knows where his uh, um, tomb is, or grave, if, if you know, he, he even has a tomb. Few men have ever had such an impact on the course of history no. as Alexander the Great. No, they have not. The breathtaking achievements of his short life ushered in the Hellenistic Age as Greek ideas spread across the territory of his former empire, fusing with local traditions to trigger new developments in art, science, government and language. Some of the successor kingdoms to his great empire were short-lived. Others endured for centuries. Ushered in the Hellenistic Age. I, this... I, I can't explain how high above expectations this whole YouTube channel is, not just in viewers and subscribers, but just what, how it's teaching me and how you guys are helping me uh, through awesome channels like this, whoever, again, all the, the Epic History TV videos, thank you for recommending them. Thank you for, for participating so much. But this is why I love doing this stuff more than anything, is it, it, it shows how, how the Persians were admired by Alexander and the Greeks, and then the Greeks took over, and they fell, and, and their warrior ways were admired by the Romans, who took that stuff. And, and it just the connection of everything over time in world history, piecing that together in my head and kind of you know getting to know it is why I do this, along with interacting with you guys who are so great in the comments. Thank you so much. This is why I do it. As Greek ideas spread across the territory of his former empire, fusing with local traditions to trigger new developments in art, science, government and language. Some of the successor kingdoms to his great empire were short-lived. Others endured for centuries. But all, in turn, would fall to new forces. And in the West, to the rising power of Rome. There's an ad. Chromebooks are seriously are awesome. easy to set up great. right out of the box. Just sign in with your Gmail and bam. All your files are right there. Now get after it. Because you're ooze. good to go. Gonna Switch gonna to setting end up the easy soon. Way. Switch to Chromebook. Uh, right after this, I'm Raid gonna... Shadow Legends is a dark Oh my god, another RPG. raid. Raid is all about collecting Research and art. I thought it might be the end. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for recommending that stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Um, obviously I, I knew very little and so I might have lost a few things in between, but overall helping me piece together world history. Thanks guys so much. Keep an eye out for my next video. I'm either going to do either going to do the uh, Napoleonic Wars part two of Epic History. You guys told me there's actually a part before the part one that I watched, and so maybe I'll check out that. Like, subscribe, check out Epic History, uh, hit that bell icon so you guys know when my next video comes out. See you guys.
Work for this video comes from Osprey.